The moment you do anything on the internet, your internet service provider is constantly tracking you. Where you go online, the passwords you use and your personal details, which are then sold off to advertisers, exposing you to malicious attacks. A VPN in today's world is vital to stay protected online, and I have been using NordVPN for over 3 years myself, alongside many others like the BBC and Fox News. If you would like to protect yourself online, use my link in the description to get 70% off a 3 year plan with a month completely free for you to test out. At only 2 69 per month, there isn't a reason why you shouldn't get it. Remember to use coupon code VITI at the checkout to get this exclusive offer. It was the 21st of April 1943, a calm midnight sky. The RAS 103rd Lancaster unit were returning home from a successful night bombing run over Germany. All of a sudden, the ground crew spots something rather strange in the sky. It was a mysterious silhouette of something that did not resemble any known Allied or Axis aircraft. The unit recalled the silhouette having incredibly small wings, travelling at very high speeds down towards Earth. At 5 past midnight over Vestervedstedt, Denmark, the mysterious object lands in a brush of trees. Ground crew rush over to the landing site to hear an eerie cry for help. Upon approach, they couldn't believe their eyes. It was the tail section of a Lancaster bomber, with the tail gunner sergeant Patrick Kramer still inside, and more importantly alive. It was a mystery, nobody understood how Kramer had managed to fly the tail section of his Lancaster to bring it in for a landing. Upon entry of the tail, it was evident that Kramer had been heavily shot and was losing blood rapidly. Many questions came to mind, but he could not be questioned at the time. He was in shock and was rushed to Ripe Hospital in Esberg, Denmark. The other Lancaster crews of the 103rd, who had survived the night bombing raid, began to explain what had happened. Kramer was an experienced tail gunner, part of the 103rd Lancaster night bombing unit. Taking off from Elsham, North Lincolnshire, England, Lancaster ED-614, piloted by George M. Pettigrew, was sent to destroy the Nazi wonder weapon V-2 rocket sites at Penmondi, Germany. His Lancaster had been hit by heavy 88mm flak on the way there, taking out two of the four engines and badly damaging the airframe. Although crippled, the Lancaster was still a very capable plane. Capable of carrying over 10 tons in payload, it was by far the best heavy bomber within the European theatre for the time. On the day it was not carrying its maximum payload, and with the two remaining Rolls-Royce Merlin engines at full power, the crew were able to keep the Lancaster aloft. The formation slowed down as they saw that the Pettigrew's Lancaster was somewhat keeping up and formed a close formation around it. This was a risky call as the entire formation was now very vulnerable to German fighter attacks. Soon the VT rocket sites over Penmondi, Germany were visible and the bombs were off, scoring a direct hit. The mission was now complete, the bomb drop had also reduced the weight of the crippled Lancaster, allowing it to climb an altitude alongside the rest of the formation on the way back home. Pettigrew's Lancaster wasn't the only one to have been wounded by flak damage. Nearby he could see a Lancaster with his engines on fire, and another one with half its tail missing. Germany by now were accustomed to nightly bombing raids and were prepared. On the 29th of September 1941, NJG-3 was formed, a Luftwaffe night fighter wing designed to deal with the British bombers during the nightly bombing raids. Hitler had scrambled a squadron of Messerschmitt Bf-110s, as soon as the first bombs landed on the V-2 rocket sites. Avro Lancasters had a top speed of 282 miles per hour. For a four-engine heavy long-range bomber, they were fast. However, the BF-110s had a top speed of 350 miles per hour, making them considerably quicker. Covered in dark camouflage, they climbed at full power to intercept the Lancasters on their way back home. Usually a formation of Lancasters could bring down a squadron of German fighters during the day. However, the close formation around the wounded Lancasters, including Pettigrew's Lancaster, meant that the BF-110s could catch up with ease. Hauptmann Bär was the German pilot of the 110 that was now behind Pettigrew's Lancaster and had started his strafing runs. Kramer, the tail gunner of Pettigrew's Lancaster, attempted to shoot back at Bär, but it was very difficult to see the night fighters in the midnight sky. German night fighters were also equipped with stealth cannon rounds to prevent the Allied bombers from seeing them once they had started their attacks. After two strafing runs, Kramer had been shot in the chest by two 20mm cannon rounds. Rapidly losing blood and unable to call for help, he carries on shooting back at the 110s. At two past midnight, 
Bear aims for the tail section of the Lancaster and successfully tears it off the plane, splitting the Lancaster in half. A Lancaster typically had seven crew members and sadly all six were killed in action alongside the Lancaster. However, Kramer had escaped. The tail section of a Lancaster is huge. With just one crew member, it acted like a glider that had been cut off at just the right length to keep the center of mass balanced. Kramer saw the other Bond 10s above him and tried to engage them once again. But when he fired the guns this time, he noticed that the recoil from them acted almost like a pusher prop, propelling it forward. Miraculously, Kramer uses his guns as an engine and manages to glide his tail section to the ground, landing successfully in a brush of trees. By now he had lost far too much blood and was in shock when the ground crews found him. He was rushed to Rye Hospital in Esberg, Denmark, but dies later on. However, it wasn't because of the landing, but the damage he had received prior to the tail being cut off that led to his death. This was not the first time that the tail had been cut off a Lancaster. It has happened on several accounts during World War II, but most were not as fortunate as Kramer to survive the landing. It heavily depends on where the center of mass is and where the tail is being cut off the Lancaster. If the center of mass were to be too far forward or too far back, the tail section would simply tumble out of control most likely killing the tail gunner on landing. I recently looked through my channel analytics and found something rather surprising. Only 1.3% of you guys watching this video are in fact subscribed to the channel. Subscribing to the channel is free and it would massively help the channel get towards the 100,000 subscriber goal for this year. Please also remember to turn on the notifications and the bell icon so that I can get these videos out to you much quicker. A huge thanks to the patrons for supporting this channel allow me to make these videos. I couldn't do it without you guys. If you would like more amazing stories, please check out my video on the cruelest B-17 ghost fortress that landed itself. Thanks for watching, stay safe.